Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with turkey matzo ball soup. That's right, we're celebrating Thanksgiving, ka. And that is when Thanksgiving Day coincides with the first day of Hanukkah, which hasn't happened since 1888 and will not happen again for another 77,000 years. So this is incredibly significant. I'm not sure exactly why, but people on the internet are saying that. And at the very least, this is going to give us an excuse to use up the last of those turkey scraps for a delicious, delicious matzo ball soup. So step one, I want you to throw all your leftover turkey in a stock pot. Everything, meat, bones, skin, all that gnarly, gelatinous stuff at the bottom of the pan. Throw it all in a pot. And to that, we're going to add some chopped onions and some celery. Along with about two quarts of liquid, usually water, but I had some leftover chicken broth, so I threw that in along with some water. And the good news for you guys is you'll notice I didn't have many scraps. I blame a couple after last call hot turkey sandwiches, and yet this still came out amazingly delicious. But the point is you're probably going to have more scraps than I did, so yours is going to come out even better. And what we'll do is we'll put this on high heat, bring it up to a simmer, and sure if some foam comes to the top, skim it off, but do not skim and discard any fat. Because that rendered turkey fat is going to be one of the key ingredients in our matzo balls. And then we're going to use standard stock or broth procedure here. Bring it up to a simmer on high. Back the heat down to low so you can maintain a nice gentle simmer. And we're going to let that cook for about three hours or until all the meat falls off the bone. And we have a beautiful rich turkey broth. And while that's simmering, I want you to take a ladle. And whenever you get enough of that rendered turkey fat that rises up to the surface, I want you to skim that off and save it. We're going to need about four or five tablespoons of that to finish this recipe. So just skim it off into a bowl. All right, so that's a key step. Do not forget to save the fat. All right, so about three hours later, we're going to have our reserved rendered turkey fat. And our turkey broth will be ready to strain. Now, I already took them out, but if you wanted to save some of those chunks of meat from the stock pot, chop it up and put it back into your soup, go for it. But it should be flavorless at this point, so I don't bother. I like my Thanksgiving cup matzo ball soup to just be broth. But suit yourself. You are the C. Everett Coop of your soup. So our fat's reserved, our broth is done, and it's on to the matzo balls, which are pretty easy if you ask me. So in a bowl, we're going to put two whole large eggs, and we're going to give them a quick beating with the whisk. Nothing major, like 30 seconds. And then we're going to add in a couple tablespoons of that rendered turkey fat. When it's chicken fat, they call that schmaltz. So I'm not sure if this is turkey, if we can still call it schmaltz. Is that kosher? But anyway, we're going to mix in a couple tablespoons of rendered poultry fat. And like I said, that really is one of the key ingredients here. At that point, we're going to season this up with some freshly ground black pepper, some salt, of course, and a pinch of cayenne. And I'm not sure if your bubby puts that in there, but she probably should. So a little salt, pepper, cayenne. We're going to mix that in. And then at this point, you're traditionally going to put in a couple tablespoons of liquid. Some people use chicken broth, or in our case, it'd be turkey broth. But other people, including me, use seltzer water. Club soda is also going to work, and apparently that's going to make our balls a little lighter. We'll switch to a fork and give that a little mix in anticipation of the main ingredient, the star of the show, matzo meal. And by the way, when you're buying ethnic ingredients that you don't have a lot of knowledge about, always buy the one with the longest name. All right, if they're in business with that long, hard to pronounce name, you know that product's pretty good. And all this is is basically a cracker meal. Just simply crushed up crackers, nothing to be afraid of. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a half cup of this, pour it into our mixture, and then just mix it around for a couple minutes with our fork. And then like any kind of breadcrumb, it's going to absorb that liquid. It's going to tighten up, thicken up. And eventually we'll be able to roll matzo balls. All right, so mix it up. It's going to look something like that. And then what we need to do before these are ready to use, we're going to have to cover this in plastic and refrigerate that for 30 minutes so that they firm up enough to roll. And of course, before I wrap mine, I give it the old tapa tapa, which I believe in Yiddish is the old shtuka shtuka. But anyway, we're going to wrap that and put it in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. And while that's getting firm enough to scoop, let's go ahead and finish the soup. And then to do that, we're going to put a pot on medium heat and we'll drizzle in a couple tablespoons of that reserved fat. So we put a couple in the matzo ball dough, but you still should have a couple tablespoons left over. So we'll dump that in along with some freshly diced carrot, celery, and onions. And we're going to sweat that on medium heat for about six or seven minutes with a big old pinch of salt until those onions kind of turn translucent, at which point I like to add a little bit of sliced garlic. That's optional. And I sliced that really thin. And why sliced instead of minced? Because I wanted a little more subtle flavor. And if you go Goodfellows on those cloves, it's generally not as strong as if you mince it. So we'll toss in the garlic, cook that for about a minute. And then we're going to add six cups of our reserved, hopefully very strong, very flavorful turkey broth. And then all we're going to do is bring this up to a simmer and simmer it for about, I don't know, 20 minutes or so until the vegetables are tender. And then other than a little bit of fresh herb right at the end, that's going to be it. And really all we're waiting for is our matzo balls to be done. And of course, as you wait, you are going to taste this soup. 
and you're going to make sure the seasoning's perfect, especially the salt. See, I don't know how much seasoning and how much salt was stuck to your turkey remnants. So make sure you taste and adjust before your matzo balls are done. All right, so theoretically, our soup is ready. We're going to pull our matzo dough out of the fridge, which should be firm enough to roll by now. And a little trick here, because I'm going to make eight matzo balls, I'm going to take my spatula, I'm going to mark the top, just to give me a guide on how much to grab. And of course, the key to that technique would be to actually grab that amount. But you know what? I'm always looking in the viewfinder, so I have an excuse. But anyway, I want you to divide the dough into eight, and then we're simply going to roll these into balls. And if you wet your fingers first, like I did here, you're going to get beautiful smooth surfaces, which I think is going to make your finished matzo balls look much nicer. All right, so we're going to roll those nice and smooth. And then believe it or not, these are going to get cooked in salted water, not in the soup. So I'm going to take some nice, fresh, cold tap water, and we're going to add a lot of salt to it. Of course, all these measurements will be on the blog. And once that's boiling, we're going to place our matzo balls in. We'll give them a little stir, even though it's totally unnecessary. And then all we're going to do is boil these for 30 minutes covered, because we want them to kind of steam. So bring it up to a gentle boil like that. We're going to cover it. And if you have to adjust your heat, adjust your heat, because once you cover stuff, it usually boils harder. But we want to maintain something just like that. Kind of a low steady boil and we're just going to cook those for 30 minutes and that's it and yes because these are going to be light and tender they are going to float and after 30 minutes we're ready to fish one out and finish this beautiful soup and of course because i'm taking pictures i had to find the roundest one so we're going to take that out with a slotted spoon we're going to place that into the bottom of a hot bowl oh you got to use a hot bowl and then we're going to finish by ladling over our finished soup but before we do let's stir in a couple tablespoons of fresh herb i like a combo of italian parsley and dill so I'm going to quickly stir that in and ladle that over our matzo ball. And now before we eat this, we're going to garnish with some crispy fried bacon. Just kidding. We're going to sprinkle over a little more fresh herb. And your turkey matzo ball soup is done. Now, I don't want to sound like a schmuck, but for a non-Jewish person, that looks pretty good. And the texture of those matzo balls, very moist, very tender. Still firm enough to get a nice clean cut with that spoon. But very tender, very light, and very delicious. The only problem is I don't think I've ever had really awesome, authentic matzo ball soup. So I really honestly don't know how close this is. I mean, it's as good as the stuff I've had out at delis, which could mean I'm good at making matzo balls, or it could mean I've just eaten at mediocre delis. So I'm not sure, but I really did enjoy it, and I think you will too. But of course, if you are a matzo ball soup expert, please let me know. Any tips or tricks to improve my technique? As usual, I'd very much appreciate that. But anyway, like I said, we're celebrating thanksgiving -ka which you've been warned is not going to happen again for 77 plus thousand years. So do not wait for the next one to make this delicious soup. Head over to foodwishes.com for all the ingredient amounts and more info as usual. And as always, enjoy and mazel tov.